Welcome to Just a Tip with Jake and Timmy. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Jake here with oh, Uncommon EDC. I am Tim from Tim School of Fish. Welcome to episode 12 of Just the Tip. Yeah, and today we're joined by our guest, Austin Jackson of traditionalpocketknives.com, a.k.a. C. Risner Cutlery. Thanks for joining us. How you doing? Yeah, doing good, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. Really excited to have mm -hmm. you on. Got a yeah, couple same. of our moderators in the chat. Looks like a pretty lively chat going, so going to dive right into it. Try and keep it to an right. hour. Sure. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys are not subscribed to the best moderating team on YouTube, Randy's WSG, Bluminati Ninja, Cheeto Bandito, make sure you subscribe to those guys. And I see a lot of the regular folks in the chat, Jeff Jackson, Pepper Dingo, RDS, Marco, Izzy's always here. Appreciate you, Randy, Raybo. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. We're looking forward to the show. So let's get into it. Awesome. You starting, right, so, you starting with this thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, for me, because I'm an idiot, is it C. Reisner <laughs> or is it C. Risner? Yes, it's uh, Reisner, like you're, you're okay. rising up, I guess. Reisner. Okay. Yeah, so, I've heard everything. Risner. Risner. Uh, uh, yeah. What else is there? So the website is, or my grandfather was Clarence Reisner. So C. Reisner Cutlery. So a lot of people would think like his name was Chris or, or Chrisner, you know, Chrisner yeah. Cutlery or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah, gotcha. just an ongoing joke, I guess. So tell us a little bit about how C. Reisner Cutlery started. I know your grandfather started the company. When did he start that company? And maybe when did you take it over? And how did you get to the point mm -hmm. where you are today? Yeah. So like I just said, my grandfather was Clarence Reisner. He was the past uh, president of the National Knife Collectors Associa mm -hmm. Association, the NKCA is what it's known for. But yeah, he started the company back in 1974, and it really just was a hobby for him. He just started collecting pocket knives, and then, you know, from there you make friends, and he just made a whole bunch of friends and started going to different knife shows, like in Cincinnati, uh, Pigeon Forge, gosh, St. Louis, uh, Lexington, Louisville, um, just everywhere down here in Kentucky, Georgia, uh, Tennessee area. And yeah, it turned into obviously more than just a hobby it turned into a business for him something that he fell in with and he started dealing with like german eye brand knives chat morgan queen cutlery queen city queen city you know everything up there in uh, titusville and i was born in 1992 i guess before i was even born he had a knife collection already set aside for me and you know ready to go so uh yeah, obviously, growing up with with Grandpa was uh, just an absolute incredible experience. Um, yeah, he just he was a great person, great man, great grandfather, and he taught me so much just about business and pocket knives and the love for the hobby. And you know, I was thankful to be able to grow up with him and attend knife shows with him and just see him interact with with different friends and different people and uh, see him like sell pocket knives at the knife shows and talk on the the speaker system and because he was in charge of the cincinnati knife show down here um obviously when he was president of the nkca so it was just uh, a blessing to obviously grow up with with him as my grandfather and learn the business learn learn about the hobby and and all that that's awesome i bet he is mm -hmm. the, 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 he has probably forgotten more about pocket knives than i will ever know you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, right. And j just tons of stories and a wealth of knowledge, I'm sure. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he, he was a very he smart mostly, man. He was mostly selling knives before he started doing the kind of collaborations where he was working with the designs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so he worked with Bill Howard. So obviously, Bill Howard's the, the owner of uh, and the founder of Great Eastern Cutlery. So right. back when bill worked with queen uh shat morgan obviously that's where grandpa and him started to design knives <clears throat> grandpa and him worked on the keystone series with shat morgan later eventually working on the premiere series uh with uh, queen and shat morgan but yeah i mean pretty, pretty much yes that's how he kind of got his hands into designing and, and whatnot 
Gotcha. Yeah, I did a video this morning on the Indian head stockman mm -hmm. of his. And yeah. uh, I was curious, do you maintain like a complete collection of his designs? Uh, so I don't have like a, a complete collection. I um, obviously have the collection that he had, you know, set aside for me before I was even born. But I would say I have, uh, gosh, 25 to 30 uh, Indian head like Stockman's and then another 25 or 30 uh, Congress four blades. And actually I have a picture right here of what I guess was one time. Hopefully you guys can see this one time was his entire uh, collection. Can oh, wow. See that? oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's killer. But yeah, I mean it's just uh, awesome. a beautiful, beautiful collection. Yeah, four blade, three blade, three blade stockmans. Um, yeah, most were the the celluloid, where uh, I guess the current day like G ten or, or acrylic or, yeah. or whatever. Um, but he every now and then he would do like a a brown jigged bone, um, a red saw cut bone. Uh, stuff like that so yeah it's really yeah. cool yeah mm -hmm. so how many can you guess the collection that he left for you how many would you guess how many knives were in that collection oh my, oh my gosh uh 200 250 Holy i would wow. say yeah wow i mean they're all so, like traditional so a lot of them are yeah. uh like german eye brand um yeah. solingen german knives um, trying to think what else shaving razors um i don't know just just you know odds and ends that he collected over the years and you know threw in my little uh you know collection i guess yeah that's cool what an awesome mm -hmm. start there yeah i was gonna say i saw on the website you actually currently own the indian head brand and licensing mm -hmm. are there other brands like that that are under the c Re reisner <laughs> um Oh gosh. Uh so yeah, Indian Head's the main one. That's the main one I wanted to 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 keep, obviously. Uh Jim Bowie, he owns Jim Bowie, or well, C Rising of Color, he owns Jim Bowie as well. I don't I mean there's there's just not a lot of, of marketing on you know or you know, direction I want to go with Jim Bowie. Jim Bowie's right. obviously like your your fixed blade. Um I don't know, niche. But yeah, Indian Head is uh definitely on the schedule for this year actually um, i don't want to spoil too much but uh it's going to be incredible um to see uh what comes out yeah i'm excited so, about that mm -hmm. so you've designed from what i understand two knives so far right mm -hmm. that yes. you have designed was mm -hmm. was your grandpa an inspiration for you to start doing that or where did you draw your inspiration from when you decided to design yeah. your own knives yeah, I mean, growing up, uh, Grandpa would would show me, you know, what's popular uh, as far as like traditional pocket knives, what patterns sell, uh, what handle materials sell well. Um, as far as like designing modern knives, he and I never really talked about that. That was more so I took over. So he um, passed away in 2016. That's when I guess I, I officially took it over, even though I've really been kind of working with him on the side. I mean, obviously my whole life. But yeah, 2016, I guess I officially took over the business, ran with it. So I started or continued to sell GEC, Schatz, um, German Eye brand. And then 2019 is when I finally was like, you know what? You know, I was kind of getting the the the, uh, the hang of, you know, what everybody's liking as far as modern M390, titanium, uh, micarta, whatever. So 20, I think it was like the end of 2019, 2020, I started drawing the Ohio River Jack, my first OEM design. And I didn't submit it until the end of 2020 or, or early 21. Um, I think, you know, 2020 is like a blur, right? But uh, <laughs> right. yeah, so I, <laughs> yeah. I submitted my Ohio River Jack and, uh, you know, I, like we were talking earlier, it's just uh, taken off and I only have a few patterns uh, left. So it's, it's cool to see everybody really enjoying the, the knife it's just a i mean it's like a cigar pattern with like two coffin yeah, end yeah. uh you know bolsters yeah, uh chamfers really on the cool. bolsters so it's not like sharp when you hold it and then uh, yeah that, that two blade version you're holding there that seemed to be uh, kind of everyone's uh favorite and honestly i was like you know what let's just throw two blades into this uh this design and i figure those would you know hardly you know move at all 
but I think it was so unique that yeah. of course they were one of the so the Jiga Titanium single blade versions sold out first, but right after that was the uh, the two blade Perfect. versions. So yeah, pretty cool. And r remind me who OEM'd this for you was yes. that QSP? Yep, QSP. Yeah, all QSP. my exclusives have been with uh, QSP. So yeah, yeah, it's just a, a good re uh, business rapport. Uh, relationship I have with them and uh, you know I trust them so it's I mean eventually yeah. I'm gonna have to to move out to like best tech and uh, QB concept you know whatever but right now I'm, a, I'm I'm very comfortable with QSP but you know it's not a good thing to be comfortable it's you know I gotta I gotta push myself here here in a few months so but uh yeah, yeah I mean they, Devo I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with Devo and we're kind of doing that yeah. too uh, I have a lot of exclusive with them so it's it's gonna be fun yeah he was, yeah, he he was, was on last the, week and mentioned uh, I saw that yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah. One thing I see with a lot of like modern slip joints is there's not a lot of two bladed modern knives out there. Was that something that's important mm -hmm. to you because you prefer two blades or just kind of wanted to have a both available? Um, so the English Jack uh, 2017, I reached out to uh, Queen um, in Shatton Morgan and I, I wanted a two blade, two uh, full size blade English Jack. Uh, I think it was a gosh, what did I have? I think the main blade was a clip blade and then our clip point blade. The secondary was a sheep's foot. But yeah, going back to to answer your question. So to me, like I've always enjoyed those like fully stocked knives, like the full length knives for uh 3.75, four inch, um, full you know, uh, uh blades, just something that I don't know, it just completes the design, you know. It's I don't know how to describe it, but you just feel like whenever you're holding the knife, like, okay, if I don't have a use for that clip point blade, well, let's use the sheep's foot. And to me, it's, it's, I love carrying a two, three bladed knife. Nice. Nice. So now, what you, you, oh, go ahead. you mentioned something about not wanting to pursue the Jim Bowie stuff. So there's no, uh, C. Reisner cutlery fixed blades in the works. <laughs> There's Should there's we... one in the works. Oh, um, really? I've already uh, well, I submitted the design. Uh, QSP revised it. Uh, I just told them, you know, I'm I'm not happy with the revision, and I told them right now, let's let's put that to the side and let's focus on uh, my third OEM, which is coming out here soon. Uh, my fourth OEM was the fixed blade, and then the fifth OEM. So the third and fifth OEMs are are good to go. Um, I want to, I want to redesign that, that the fixed blade. It's just, it wasn't working out with me and I was getting frustrated and, uh, yeah. uh take a step back for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. A couple of people mm. have mentioned the, uh, jig titanium and the socket titanium being mm. game changers. Yeah. Sure enough? Yeah. Yep. Here, let me put you up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah both are excellent. I would love to see actually oh, yeah. a buckshot titanium. <laughs> I have seen that. That would be cool. Yeah, and here's here's my new uh, jig tie with oh, the exclusive oh, button nice. lock penguins. That's obviously more like a, a corn cob or a, yeah, uh, like a seed jig. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, that is sweet. I'm gonna skip There's ahead a, lot, a little lot bit. Of... And we'll... What's up? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm gonna skip ahead oh. a little bit and we'll go back. With yeah, QSP, yeah, sure. you have a ton of, obviously, your OEMs are through QSP, mm -hmm. ton of exclusives yep. through QSP. How does that usually happen with the exclusives where it's a QSP design? Are you approaching <laughs> them and saying, hey, I want to see this version, or are they coming to you? No, it's 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 100%, you know, me going to them. Um, I like their designs. Obviously, with this, uh, let me uh, get a, a box real quick. So like with their with their penguin, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I improved their uh, sharpening toil right here. Yeah. If, if you look at a regular penguin, there, there really isn't much uh, to the sharpening toil. And then I also had them add the hollow grind uh, to their their uh, main blade, the the sheep's foot blade, hand satin right. finish. Um, I had them improve. So they have like budget versions of their button lock. I didn't really care for that. So I had them completely redesign the handle to where the thumb studs, when the blade is closed or seated, it's easier to access the thumb studs because on their budget versions, I mean, you just, you just could 
barely access the the, uh, the thumb studs. Um, so to go back to your to your question, I mean, I respectfully, you know, like go to them and you know suggest, hey, can I get some exclusives in the penguin, the hedgehog? But these are the changes I want made. These are why I want the changes made. This is what everybody is wanting. And I'm mean, usually they have obviously no issue with uh, making the changes. And it's it's interesting to, to see. Well, it, it's good to see because when we were designing my Ohio River Jack and I was showing them, you know, what a slip joint. I think they had a, a QSP. I forget their original slip joint uh, version. It was like the QSP Parrot or something. I mean, it was it was not good. So when I was talking to them with the Ohio River Jack, explaining to them, you know, what exactly a, a slip joint needs, walk and talk, strong spring, um, half stop, just just every little thing about a slip joint. You know, they, they really didn't know what, what any of that, you know, wording meant. So to explain that back and forth, it was uh, quite a process. But we finally got to the point where they were able to uh, provide me prototypes. It took two tries. Uh, the second tr the second prototypes were, were right on the, exactly what I wanted. And so from there, it was interesting to see when they came out with the hedgehog design. Because if, I mean, let's just be honest. If you compare the Ohio River Jack with the hedgehog, besides the handle, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar. And, you know, they add right. the, the double uh, long pulls on each side. Um, the walk talk is almost identical to the Ohio River mm -hmm. Jack, which is cool. You know, you know, whatever, whatever I can do to make them uh, produce better quality knives. That way, the whole community and, and myself can enjoy them. I mean, I think that's what it's all about. Um, but it, it's it's been a very good process working with QSP these last two or three years, and to see them improve, uh, it's it's just neat to to uh, to see it all come around. I guess. Right. Yeah. And. With the uh, the newest QSP Hedgehog, the uh, PP Plastic, how much uh, pushing was there to <laughs> approve plastic. the name of that? Yeah, right. Uh, are you talking about the uh, the the penguin here? Yeah, the the there Ultim. The Ultim. Yeah, yo. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, so I asked, uh, you know, can you do? So I asked QSP. Gosh, uh, September, October of last year. Um, one, you know do you know what Ultim is? And of course they, they <laughs> knew um, them. Like I, my other question was, can you even resource it? Or is that something that I would have to buy here in the States, ship it over? Um, but yeah. I told them, you know, I don't want any kind of design on the Ultim. I want it, you know, clean, smooth, buffed out where it's just, you know, you can see right through it and you know it looks like super clean, good quality. I mean, what they came out with was was exactly uh, what I wanted. It's just super shiny. I mean, it it feels good in the hand. It's not slick, you know, at all. Um, it provides good grip. I've used this for cutting vegetables and fruits. My hand doesn't slip on the ultimate. That's one thing I was I was afraid of. Uh, just uh, a super super. I get why people <laughs> I get why people call it you know piss yellow or, or urine color, but uh, I don't know. I love it. You know, it's just. Uh, I've been carrying this around for, for two weeks now, and uh, it feels so good in the hand. It cuts super well. Obviously, the hollow grind, hand satin finish, and uh, yeah, I love it. Awesome. So but yeah, I, I don't I don't think they they knew where I was going to take the marketing. I mean, <laughs> I, they they honestly yeah. probably don't don't even care. Um, right. But, you know, I was like, let's have fun with it. You know, screw yeah. it. Let's just let's have fun with it. If people get you know insulted because I named it you know piss yellow or whatever, then you know, so be it. But I mean, so far, everybody's enjoyed the sticker. Uh, they've enjoyed the videos. So <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> today on the channel, I took a look at this, the QSP oh, yeah. variant, which is um, a Jacob Lundquist design that was originally from Kvist Blade Works. And so I kind of have a business question for you, but the mm -hmm. The, our viewers seem to kind of get interested in this kind of stuff. Is this something? So I'm sure that he licensed the design for this knife to QSP, and now QSP is producing it under the QSP name. Um, mm -hmm. 
is this something that you could do an exclusive on or is something like that off limits because it's likely licensed? Yeah, I, I, I have I have no idea. So are you asking like, can I do an exclusive in that version? Yeah, like could you take I, the I, QSP? I, I would just, yeah. I, right, I guess QSP would probably have to ask uh, ask him and yeah, get his approval. Yeah. I'm sure there's some contract there where... Yeah, um, yeah, I would... Yeah, he, but I mean, I've I've talked to him at Blade Show, and uh, you know, I like his designs. Um, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. I don't carry anything on on uh, of his brand on my website, but uh, you never know what the future holds. Right now, I got I got a lot going on with the website and and future OEMs and all that. So uh, everybody that's reaching out, I'm just kind of like, you know, hey, you know, not not right now. It's just not a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. Getting back to your OEMs, can you talk a little bit about the second design that Lake Champlain Barlow, where the name yeah. comes from, and just kind of yeah. what that process is like? Yeah. So, uh, Grandpa born in Grandpa was born in South uh, Eastern Kentucky, down in Hindman and Hazard. Um, obviously, didn't grow up with with uh, a lot of money. I mean, he had a family of, I think, seven or eight siblings. Uh, his father died when he was six. Uh, his father was deployed to, uh, overseas, World War II. Um, I think got uh, some kind of illness, came back, and then and passed away. But yeah, so Grandpa had to help uh, raise his family with his mom. Uh, he was the oldest or second oldest, I believe. And so when he turned 18, graduated high school, you know, he needed money for college because he, he was a very smart man, uh, just highly educated, but just couldn't afford college. And so he enrolled uh, or enlisted, enlisted in the United States Navy, uh, went to boot camp, and then got stationed or assigned to USS Lake Champlain CV-39 um, aircraft carrier. He served, uh, I think, two tours in the Korean War, uh, been to, gosh, the Middle East and Europe and Asia, and, and to hear some of his stories about where he traveled with all his friends and, and on, on the, the USS uh, Lake Champlain CV-39. It was uh, just so cool to, to hear. So when it came time, you know, the Ohio River Jacks uh, were, were selling really well. I was thinking of my next design. Uh, of course, I wanted it to be a Barlow. I love Barlows. Barlows, I mean, are, are obviously a very popular pattern. Feel good in the hand. They cut well. You can throw any kind of blade style in a Barlow. And... The only issue I had was, I mean, you see, you know, GC Barlows are 3.25, 3.5. You you hardly ever see um, like a, you see Granddaddy Barlows, which are like 4.25, I think, or four inches right. closed. But I wanted something like right in the middle where, you know, it, it kind of set myself um, apart from anybody else that was doing modern traditionals. And I think I hit it right on, on the head and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good sized, oh, here I'll. This is actually a prototype. This is a, a spear point, which I haven't made yet, but I'll show you guys. But yeah, I mean, it's a it's a medium to large size uh, Barlow. It feels good in the hand. I mean, it provides a full grip. Then obviously this is a, a spear point version, and I redesigned this a little bit, and I have a spear point, obviously, and a slim Warncliffe version in the works. But I mean, we're not talking, uh, I mean, it, it might be till... November of this year before uh, something even close. I still have, like I mentioned earlier, the third and fifth OEMs to come out. I got plenty of exclusives with uh, with Devo, and I got more exclusives with QSB coming. So, I mean, we're looking at a November release. But, I mean, everybody wants uh, the Spear Point in the Lake Champlain, and, I mean, I, I promise you it's it's coming. Uh, it's just going to gonna be a while because I got a lot planned. So, oh, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, did did that answer your question? Sorry, I kind of rambled on there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, and you kind of answered the question that I was going to ask, which was, should mm -hmm. we expect some future iterations of the Ohio River Jack and the mm -hmm. Lake right. Champlain Barlow? And you just said there's another Barlow coming out. Um, yep. What about some different iterations of the Ohio River Jack? And maybe are there any plans to take these and at a future date, of course, re-release them maybe with some different handle materials? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So I have already submitted the Ohio River Jack. I redesigned it a little bit. I added jimping to the blade spine, um, enlarged the sharpening choil. Uh, 
I did I did a one or two other things. A hollow grind, hand satin finish, S ninety V. Um uh, I think that, that was the main updates. But yeah, so I have that submitted. It's uh only gonna be jig of titanium, uh one hundred of each. The same jig tie that was on the first uh Ohio River Jacks. I want you know to match that way people can collect them or you know, whatever they want to do. So I do have that submitted. I just submitted that in january so i mean we're not we're it won't be available probably till end of june um it'd be nice to get them in before blade show but i don't think that's going to happen but yeah, yeah so i got those coming uh 100 of each uh no wait you can no actually 400 so i got a uh slim worn cliff uh a sheep's nice. foot spear point and then a new uh clip point version so everybody that's wanted a, a clip point version in the ohio river jack i promise it's coming uh, so that, that that's uh, hopefully here in June. Uh, super excited for that. I think, uh, and I, I should be able to match the 165 price. Um, I'll have to double check that. Don't don't you know quote me on that just yet. But I do want to stay around the 150, 65, 170 uh, price range, and I should be able to to hit that. So, awesome! Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. That's mm -hmm. gonna be yeah, awesome. I wanted to say a, cool. a quick thank you to B for Baron for the donation. Greatly appreciated. Yeah. And also wanted to revisit a little bit back in the chat. Randy was asking if you have any plans on working with OEMs in the U.S. now that Baron Sense, for example, is uh, mm -hmm. opening for OEM work. Yeah. Uh, so without spoiling too much, I do have a few things working with uh, GC. So, I mean, that's, that's let's just get that out of the way. I mean, that's, what it probably, that's probably what everybody wants to hear. Uh, Cooper Cutlery, uh, they're just right down here in Winchester, Ohio, 45 minutes south of me. I've talked with them here and there. Obviously, they're still figuring out their uh, their designs, uh, their own road. You know, they, they want to walk their own road for a little bit, and that's cool, right? I mean, they, they need right. to establish themselves uh, in the next few years um, like they have been doing. As far as Baron and Son, uh, I met the owner one time. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to talk bad. No, that's just not what the knife community is for. Uh, I don't really care for him. Um, he, uh, he was pretty rude to me. Back when I was I was young, mm. young younger in 2017, 2018, and uh, you know it's just uh, it's hard to to move on once once you're disrespected one time. It's it's difficult to take it to you know go yeah, back and, and ask again. So, um, but yeah, as far as uh, OEM work with uh, United States um, Tactile Knife Company, I also have uh, I got one right here. Let me get out of the box for you. I have my own kind of Jig of titanium version with them. Of course, I can't open it. <laughs> Gosh. So that's that's one thing that we can talk about is the the quality on some of these these OEMs. I mean, especially in the United States, they they just it's a shame they can't match what overseas uh, you know what they're doing overseas. And right. like, like there's, there's no reason that this should have, have, have locked up. Like, I mean, I can't even open it up. So now this is going to be something where I'm going to have to take it apart and I mean, figure out like, why, why has it seized up? And I mean, I haven't used this knife in, in three months, the rock wall, and there's no reason that it should have seized up like that. So there's, there's an issue with either, <sighs> loctite or i mean i i don't even know you know it's just right. stuff it's, it's it's kind of frustrating so that that right there is a perfect example of of why it's difficult to want to work with oems with um obviously us uh oems and it's just i get why everybody wants me to you know everybody wants to yeah. see a usa made knife right i'm i'm, I'm right there with you but it, when QSP is producing a knife with better quality, better bearings, uh, sharper blades, I mean, it's just, and, and better price. I mean, that, that's what it, you know, it's all about is better pricing. It's just, uh, it's difficult to pass that up to go with a, a US OEM. But to get back to tactile, I mean, these sold fairly well, uh, pretty expensive. I think this version was like 275 to 295. Uh, I mean, it's just, a little bit too expensive. I mean, I I probably paid two fifteen for these. Uh, it's just uh, it's just not worth the the hassle 
and yeah. um, it's a little bit frustrating. But well, you know, as far as uh, OEMs with traditional slip joints, I mean, obviously Cooper and and GC, I'm I'm 100 in with them. Good people. Uh, I, I know the people obviously behind the brand, and I mean that that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, and a couple things. First of all, that's too bad about the owner of Baron Sons, and I agree with you that um, it's it's hard to get that bad taste out of your mouth once that has happened. I completely understand mm -hmm. that. And I've had this conversation on my channel many times about U.S. manufacturers and U.S. OEMs. We all want a USA made knife, but we kind of, regardless of the price point, we kind of expect it and want it to be just a little bit better. And nine yeah. times out of 10, it's not. And it's that yeah. way yeah. with case knives. Like I love case. Uh, mm -hmm. And I hate case because every time I buy a case knife, unless you buy it out of from the counter and put your hands on it, yeah. you don't know what the hell you're going to get. You know, I get yeah. usually I get better knives with a twenty dollar Rough Rider. I get better fit and finish walk and talk and action than I do on most case knives. And it just kind of, you know, it hurts your heart because you want it to be good. And a lot yeah. of times it's not. And so I can see if I was doing what you were doing, I would do the exact same thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I completely understand it. Yeah. I mean, when I first got the exclusive in from uh, Tactile, and, and I understand Tactile is a, a newer brand. And, you know, I've, I've talked to Will, the owner down there. The, the, the machining was, was, was good, in my opinion. But it's just like you know, little stuff, like off-centering blades. Uh, I mean, the bl the blades weren't sharp, so I had to send like 20 or 25 of them back. Just little stuff that really should have been touched in before I even, or before the knives were, were yeah. even sent to me. And yeah, for uh, sure. it's frustrating that now, you know, I got like the blades locking up here and yeah, I mean, I, I can go on and on um, yeah. about just yeah, no frustrations of, of at least trying to work with, with USA OEMs. Because, I mean, when it comes down to it, everybody wants a good quality knife for a good good price. And, uh, yeah. I mean, QSP is hitting that, hitting that for me, and I'm doing pretty good with the exclusives. So, yeah. Yep. I think QSP does great work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, sure. For sure. Now, when it comes to brands you sell, one that's come up a couple times, GEC, huge fan of them. Mm. But I know a lot of people have a hard time on the drops. Do you have any yeah. tips for someone just getting into it on how you can get your first GC? Yeah, tips, right. <laughs> tips for them. So. I, yeah, I'm so done. Babe. I'm done. I give up on uh, GC. I'm never going to get one on the drop. I refuse to buy it on the mm -hmm. secondary market. I will yeah, I get my first it. one on the on the drop, and that will never happen. So it just pisses yeah. me off to no end. It never works um, out. I mean, my website is through Shopify, so. Uh, Shopify really pushes the shop pay app. Um, if you have Apple Pay, uh, PayPal Express, uh, really any payment app that's like hooked or linked to your phone or, or tablet or whatever you have, where you can, uh, so like shop, Shopify, if you're logged into Shop Pay, all you have to do is go to that GC once they release, add it to the cart. And then once you go to the cart, it auto fills all your information already has your payment info and boom, you're done. So that's why after I hit like the submit, so let's say I have a release at 2 PM, I enter all the quantities, 2 PM hits, boom, I hit submit. It makes the knives available. I mean, I start getting, you know, orders with like five, six, seven seconds. And it's literally mm -hmm. shop pay is, I mean, these guys are re refreshing it over and over and over and then boom, the knives come available and then shop pay pretty much processes it for them. And then, uh, Obviously, they're checked out, and and so so everybody that's sitting there typing in there as fast as they can, typing in their their credit card and and payment info. I mean, unfortunately, it's just uh, it's just not how it's gonna, um, you know, it's not not efficient enough. So. Well, Austin, I appreciate your advice, but I do use mm -hmm. Shop Pay, and all yeah. everything's preloaded. I've got my cart sitting yeah. there, and I hit refresh right at the time, and I go to hit pay, and they're gone. It's just, yeah. I have shit luck. Oh, yeah. I get it, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what I've done recently, so like this last GC release, I had 120, 
uh, maybe a little less than 120. But I mean, so GC ships these knives out in batches of anywhere from five to 25 to 35. Um, yeah. So instead of just having release after release, I try to save them up to where I at least have anywhere from 100 to 150 knives. And I feel like that gives people a, a better, better opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I could be wrong. Who knows? And I also, something that sets me apart is I keep my prices pretty high for GSC releases. I don't shame it. I don't hide away, from, you know, hide from it. You know, I'm honest with people and, you know, Hey, this knife is going to be 145, 150, 175, whatever. Um, and I feel like that maybe keeps the flippers away and allows more people to, uh, you know, grab a knife that a, a flipper, you know, an eBay dude would have got. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't think there yeah. really is a right or wrong way to, to uh, release GCs. But I try my yeah, best. I feel like the way you do it with the multiple does make it a little bit easier if you go after the one mm -hmm. that you think's not going to be as in high demand. So, you know, if yeah. there's three 15s and you, there's a really popular jig bone and then you have like an acrylic cover, if you go for that acrylic cover, you probably better chance um mm -hmm. i've definitely had better luck with apple pay just like tyler was saying apple pay seems to yeah. be pretty quick i've used paypal before it doesn't seem quite as fast but apple pay seems to work mm -hmm. maybe that's what i need to do is quit using shop and start using apple pay and uh, we just put up on the screen byron is says you've got a sale on the abkt knives right now and if you guys see me looking down at my phone that's exactly <laughs> what i'm doing right now because they're going fast so um i hesitate to put that up there um but my card is loaded up as we speak so yeah, yeah you guys go before yeah may yeah, pick up yeah, a few more if there's any left it looked like you're getting pretty low a lot of them said like four left seven left so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah there's been uh, a couple couple that have sold yeah, I think out a lot of the stockmen and trappers channel. are pretty much uh the ones that are left so honestly i uh, i was sick and tired of them just sitting over here um i would sell two or three a week and uh, i bought a first batch of them like two years ago they sold really well uh the second batch just uh i don't know i think i got a little bit too confident and they were just kind of sticking around uh so i was like you know what let's just throw them up for you know five ten bucks off and get them out of here and I mean, honestly, they're, they're good knives for, for, you know, 10 to knife. Um, yeah. And my, my whole point was to carry the ABKT brand. That way people can buy them for their grand grandkids or it's, it's a good starter knife. And you don't have to worry about, yeah. you know, the kid, the kid dropping it. Um, or if you want to use it out in the farm and just throw it in your pocket, or if you drop it on the gravel, you know, whatever, you, you don't, you're not going to worry about it. Um, but I think people were, were buying the knives and expecting them to be GC quality and uh, so I, I feel bad because the quality is there, but I mean, it's, it's, it's keep in mind, it's a 10, $15 knife. So there, there's things that a GC has that these knives, you know, don't have. And um, yeah, looking back, maybe I just shouldn't have, have uh, dealt with ABKT because I, I'm known for carrying quality knives. I, I love having quality knives and that's, that's pretty much what my site is. Um, but yeah, live and learn and keep walking. So. Yeah, Absolutely. Another one that's uh, been pretty hot lately, I feel like, is Cooper Cutlery. Now, I know yeah. early on there was that Battle Axe one I was super into. I never actually ordered one because the fit and yeah. finish I heard wasn't great. But I've been hearing it's been better. Was that your experience with the mm. last run? Yeah, last runs were, uh, what, the Beaver Creek uh, or Beaver Knives, um, Dollar Knife Co. Right. Gosh, what else were they? I don't know. They're all on the website. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Quality, quality wise, much better. Yeah. The first releases with like the Weed Co, uh, Battle Axe. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Definitely, you know, they, they were learning uh, and, and right. they were in the process of learning. So they live right down here. Like I mentioned earlier, they live 45 minutes from me. I went down there when they first had all the, the equipment um, returned to them or brought to them. Uh, they were just learning the process of making traditional pocket knives. And so what they had done is they, they sent me the first round of, oh gosh, I, I think they were the Ween Co knives or whatever. And right. I told them like, Hey, you know, how about I come down, you know, we'll just chit chat and, uh, you know, we'll talk stories about grandpa. And what I did was I also brought some of the Shat and Morgan knives that were made in Titusville. And so that actually was, was uh, pretty useful. So I went down there. Great, great guys. Um, 
developed a, a really good friendship. I talked to to the son almost uh, every week. But to get back to my story, I brought down the the Shatton Morgans, you know, and I we we kind of compared uh, what they were making compared to the Shatton Morgans that were in the display case. Uh, they looked at you know like the function. I think I had a few Shatton Morgan uh, folding hunters, uh, mountain men, teardrops, uh, just you know odds and ends. But it was cool to see that you know that they they were able to look at the knife, uh, see what they're missing, see what they can improve on. And over the last two years, especially, you know, like I just said, with this last release, uh, the quality is much better. The only complaint I had and I let Matt Cooper know was the blade edge. The blade edge, they were they were good, but I mean, tons of room for, uh, for improvement. And yeah. that was really my biggest complaint about this last run was blade edges. And obviously, I mean, I would say 50 percent of the people that buy knives from me, they're going to they're going to put their own edge on the blade anyways, which is probably what I would do. Um, but I mean the, the knives, if you're going to sell them and sell them through dealers, like they, they've got to be like straight out of the box, razor sharp and, and good yeah. to go. Um, but yeah, as, as that was my only complaint, um, the, 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 the bone was beautiful. Uh, the wood was beautiful. I'm trying to think what else was there. Yeah. Just yeah, overall, my, my just, uh, I, I was impressed. So, I was going to say my favorite from that run was actually the yellow bone with that red plastic yeah. looking red shield. shield yeah. It's called the dollar knife. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know why. Something about just like it, it looked just like cheap user. Yeah. It's a $125 <laughs> knife made in the USA. Yeah. You know? um, All right. I really mm -hmm. dug that one. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. They, uh, gosh, they had so many, uh, like, like in the, in the yellow and blue handle, they had three or four variants, um, which was cool. It's a pain in, for me, because I have to list them all and make product pages for all of them. And then when it's time right. for the release, I have to go through like each product page and make sure I have the inventory and quantity is right. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cool to, to offer, you know, a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, Coopers and, and whatnot. Yeah. That's one cool thing that you do on your site that I feel like most sites don't is when there's a variation in mm. the cover material, something like this, where each yeah. one is a little bit different, you list each one individually so you can actually pick yeah. out the covers that you're getting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I honestly, just that. you live and learn. And over the years, uh, like with Finches or, or mm. even GCs, like with the Stags, you know, I would always take just like one main picture of, of what... So let's say I got, you know, 30 GC Stags in. I would try to find one that kind of matched the whole group um, and after a while, you know, I, I would get a, a, a gentleman here and there complaining like, well, this stag doesn't look like the one in the picture. And uh, after like one or two emails, I was like, all right, I'm done. You know, this is, this is not how it's going to go. And uh, I was like, you know, what? let's just make individual product pages. That way that person knows exactly what knife they're buying. Yeah. And uh, ever since I did that, I mean, it's been smooth sailing. Uh, people are so much happier knowing the exact knife they're going to get. Uh, makes them happy, makes me happy, and uh, a little bit more work on my end, but you know, it brings them back to buy again and again and again, and yeah. that's what it's all about. So, yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. appreciate so, that. Uh, Jack Wolf is having their spring sale kicking off yep. this Friday. Can you tell us uh, what models that include, what models yeah. you have in stock, and which one you would be targeting if you didn't have it? It's a good question. Um, yeah, so everything besides the gunslingers. Um, gosh, let me uh, let me hop over to the website real quick. I, I just ordered four of those ABKTs, by the way. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be I'm sure I'll be giving a couple of them away on the channel because I love there giving you go. stuff away all the time. Yeah, nice. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, so the gunslingers are not included. Um, in this one and the sales 20 percent off so 60 bucks yep. off yep awesome yep so 20 yeah, percent off a... um obviously most of them are, are two i think all of them now are, are 2.99 uh, mm -hmm. uh and so um let's see here of course my my internet is slow and loading yeah that's and a heck of a deal right. 60 dollars off Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't beat that. yeah i would say uh the midnight jacks um the jigged reverse tux uh was pretty popular i only have a few of those left i mean what, what's really 
and he, I've talked with Ben obviously about the whole nebula, fat carbon nebula. You know, his his first few runs that he had fat carbon nebula made. I mean, it, it went really well, and they sold out really super quick. Uh, but yeah, for some reason, the, the you know the knife market changed, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, now not nobody wants nebula. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would say the midnight jacks will probably sell, um, followed by the sharpshooter jacks. And uh, I, have a, I have a few little bros. Um, and honestly, I mean, that's about it. I mean, I one thing about my customer base is, you know, they're extremely loyal. And, um, you know, I feel like I, I've built that o- up over the years. And, and people know me. People know how I run my business. Um, I've created the rewards program. So, you know, every order gets 4% back. Um, they earn. If they, they, if they want to invest in my company, well, I'm going to invest back in them. Um, so that's why I created the rewards program. So, I think along with the sale and the rewards program, I mean, it's uh, uh, a pretty good deal. I mean, I, th- I think it's it's fair. So, yeah, there's yeah. no doubt about it. And uh, earlier, a couple people had posted that um, TPK had the best customer service in the business, mm-hmm. and I will cool. tell you right. that I continue to order from you again and again and again. And you do have the best customer service, and you have the fastest shipping of anybody out i mean right. i will order something good, and two days good. later it's at my freaking door and i love it and <laughs> there's, there's a, always a little handwritten note thanks austin mm-hmm. yep. and i think yep. it's an awesome touch man so keep doing what I you're appreciate doing that. You're, you're you're doing it right brother yeah thank you man yeah every every invoice i uh, i sign if i'm not yep. here or can't sign it then brian will sign it brian's my buddy uh, we've been best friends ever since high school, so I love him like a brother. He, he I mean, he's he pretty much is a brother to me. Um, so I'm I'm blessed to work with him every day on on the knives. So yeah, if I don't sign the invoices, uh, Brian's gonna sign them. And so a funny story today: some guy was buying all those ABKTs, and he had checked out um, with he he purchased Express, you know, USPS forty dollar Express shipping. So of course, you know, me and Brian are on it. You know, we're we're printing orders, we're fulfill, we are fulfilling them. Uh, we only have like thirty minutes left before we have to run down to the post office, and uh, you know, we get his done first since it's express. You know, I want to get those quick because you know, for some reason, they want it uh, that you know the next day. Uh, so, you know, we we did her, his first, got them all, you know, good to go, packaged up, and like right at four o five, he emailed us saying, "Hey, you know, sorry." Uh, uh, I didn't mean to, you know, get the express shipping. Uh, so I was like, Hey, it's no problem, man. You know, I'll, let me, uh, let me just hold, hold your uh, order and I'll, I'll get it shipped tomorrow. Um, but I was like, you you were like that close for me, uh, shipping it, but it's just, uh, I guess that's a, it's a good, good and bad thing that, you know, I, we, we ship out packages so quick. Um, but most people can either call me, text me, uh, message me or, uh, you know, email. And, um, I check that, gosh, I check it too much. Um, but you know, I love the hobby, love the business, and I love it. So, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that rewards program adds up quick. Before I was uh, getting mm-hmm. the uh, Jack Wolf for review, I was purchasing them through you, and then I would use the rewards mm-hmm. the next month, each month. Like, yeah, awesome, Just, yeah. good. Yeah, that's what's there for. I mean, seriously, use them, and uh, I would say ninety percent of the people that shop through the website are using it. So, I mean, that makes me so happy. Um, and, and if you have any questions, you know, regarding it, you know, give us a call, email, um, more than happy to, to help you out. But I think it's, I think it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, people seem to not really have any questions about it and they're using yeah. it. So it makes me happy. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, now when um, it comes to, the... oh, go ahead. No, Jake, go. I was going to say, when it comes to your personal carry, what does that usually look like for you? Are you strictly slip joints or you do a little bit of both? A little bit of both. Uh, usually I carry one of my exclusive hedgehogs or uh, penguins. I've been carrying the Ultim Penguin around for a little bit now, uh, for two or three weeks now. But yeah, usually, like let's say we're, we're going out to dinner on a Friday night. Um, I always have either like the Devo Lush with me. I got a, I got a penguin. And then in my back pocket, I got like a GC 66 or a Rosecraft, uh, Cane Creek Jack, uh, Savage Gunstock. Um, you, you always got to have that combo, you know, you got to have that flipper, but you also got to, you know, be a little, uh, traditional and, and carry the slip joint. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's usually me too. <laughs> uh, it's usually mm-hmm. a modern knife and a slip joint and my modern knife 
I'm new to Finch. I have three Finches right now. I know right. some guys have all of them, but more, <laughs> JB. more, on, yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah right. And, uh, Timmy, oh father, who was in the chat earlier, he's got a ton mm -hmm. of them too. And, oh yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think he he was the one that turned me on to him, and um, I'm fanboy now. So more often than mm -hmm. not, it's a it's a Finch and probably a Rosecraft. You know, it's mm -hmm. a oh yeah. It's a modern and a and a slip joint. But what I love about the Finch knives is it's a modern knife with that traditional mm -hmm. a feel yeah. to it. You know what I mean? It still has that traditional sort of aesthetic, even though it's a modern knife. And mm -hmm. I just dig that. And Rosecraft kind of the same way. You know what I mean? It's got all a right. little bit of modern, a little bit of traditional. So it ticks yes. all the boxes for me. That's right. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the prices for Finch, I mean, I think the most expensive, if you exclude the Buffalo Tooth from, from Finch, I mean, we're looking at 145 to 115 Um Can't And then it. for Rosecraft, I mean, Rosecraft is, I mean, they're 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 on top right now. Uh, well, excuse me, GC's obviously on top. I mean, right. GC's on, on a on mountain on their own. But, uh, yeah, Rosecraft is hitting it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing good for the quality, the price, um, the designs. Andy's killing it with his designs. Uh, everybody's wanting this uh, Nola, Nola Chucky Jack, I think, yeah. coming out uh, next Monday. So um, yeah, I do have yeah. uh, a whole bunch of those, those coming. Should be should be said. I was talking to Andy with them, or <clears throat> I was talking to Andy about the Nola Chucky, and I mean, both of us think that it, it, this might be like the first uh, Rosecraft pattern to 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 sell out within you know a day or two. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we'll see. You know. I think maybe, maybe, maybe I'll sell five, you know, who knows? <laughs> no, I think those are going to go quick. I told <laughs> yeah, him the exact same yeah. thing. It's mm. just really slick and his choice of cover materials and that spear point yeah. blade, you know, a lot of dudes love a spear point and mm. I think it's going to go quick too. Yeah. And yeah, they're just, they're just killing it. I think that one's going to go quick for you. I don't think you're going to be having any sales on that one. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. So when it comes to GEC, I know you have a pretty big GEC collection as well. Do you have a favorite mm -hmm. pattern? Uh, yeah, the 66 uh, calf roper. I mean, I three bladed stockman uh, has all the blades in it. I would ever need actually. Yeah, here it is. Excuse the, uh, it's got a little rust and patina yeah. on it, but it's great. Yeah, that's well loved right there. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it, it checks all the boxes, clip point, uh, sheep, little spade blade. So that's it for me. Yeah, I would say that that's my go to. Uh, if I don't care, Rosecraft, I mean, that's my go to knife right here. Um, yeah, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it's actually mentioned. Uh, do you make your slips in house or are they made somewhere locally? Yeah, so uh. Gosh, I don't know how I got in contact. Uh, Brian Warner with Low Tide Leather um, out in Oregon. I, you know, I forget how I got in contact with him. I think I saw his work on Instagram. He sells like wallets, trays, um, all that stuff. And I just shot him a message one day, like, "Hey, man, you know, this is kind of what I'm looking for. I love your work. Your website's awesome. Um, would you be interested?" And I mean, we've been working together for five, six years now, and uh, I mean, he's. He he knows my my standards. I want good quality, good good leather, good stitching. Um, I want these slips to last hundreds of years, you know. Um, and I, I think uh, I got one of the best slips um, or slip options out there. Uh, Thirty bucks, so pretty fair, good quality. Um, and you know, I love that he's a small small family man, just just you know working to to make a living too. So the fact that uh, he can now make slips and we can kind of work with each other and help the, help him out, help me out and help the, the knife community. It's a, it's a good relationship. So, Yeah. Yeah. I think a really good value for American mm -hmm. made and offer yeah. a bunch of really cool colors. I like the bright yeah. colors on the yeah. die. Yeah. So uh, gosh, the last two years, I mean, it, it's mainly been like buck Brown uh, or black, I think. Um, but yeah, so this in January, I, you know, I, I set out kind of a year's list like, hey, man, these are the the colors I want uh, as far as leather. Th this is the stitching I want. 
Um, you know, are you are you able to do it? So yeah, so every month this this year we should have a new slip. We just came out with the uh, was it red the red orange? chili pepper? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the 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 orange or the nineties was was in March, and uh, he just finished the chili peppers. Uh, so I just had those uh, on the website. I think last Friday or last Thursday, uh, which I, I I'm pretty sure the the red's gonna be my favorite because it's just uh oh, it looks it looks professional but you know a little little spice too so looks good right a little mm. bit of flash that's right <laughs> yeah the 80s actually uh when that i first cool. advertised them yeah i may i made him i may have moved i don't know 10 or 15 uh but now in like the last week or two it seems somebody must have shared it somewhere or yeah. <laughs> or on youtube right. or something because i've moved like 30 of them so now I'm, i mean i buy hundreds of these uh well, well exactly a hundred uh, per slip so i still have 60 or you know 55 left uh but yeah it's just weird how the knife market you know you know something slow one day but then you know I, you you make that right youtube video or or that right person on instagram shares a picture of it and then it just takes off and yeah yeah it's also unpredictable even with like youtube when mm-hmm. with our own videos of videos i think are, are gonna do well they do horribly yeah. and ones that i have <laughs> right. no reasons for yeah. have ten thousand views it right. What's funny is, you know, I put together this really nice video and it's like, man, I'm, you know, everybody's going to like this video. It's going to get so many, you know, interactions and likes and whatever. And it might get like two or 300, but then, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm kind of groggy and just, you know, let's just make this video real quick. And of course that gets like a thousand views. You know, I'm like, how is that? <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. Yeah. My most viewed videos, I've only had a couple, two or three, maybe, um, where, I get on there and I just get on a rant and just start bitching oh, yes. and moaning about something, you know, just carrying on, yep. acting a fool. And those always yeah. do better than anything. And I'm like, maybe yep. I should take this down. And then I'm like, hold on, now it's got 10,000 views. Maybe I That's should right. leave it up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. You just never know. You never know. Yep. Never know. So yep. you mentioned uh, your OEM design number three and five mm-hmm. were probably the next one to come out. Can we yep. expect to see those in 2024 and any chance before Blade Chef? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 2024, um, the third and fifth OEM, definitely 2024. Um, as far as uh, before Blade Show, the Jig Tie, so like the second release of the ORJs, uh, I, I think will be available. I'm, I'm hoping to have them before the Blade Show. Uh, my third OEM, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I just submitted it in December or January. I don't know. I got so many, so many projects. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to have my third OEM and the Ohio River Jacks for the Blade Show, but but definitely 2024. Um, I, I got I got a lot planned, a uh, lot planned with Devo, uh, more QXP exclusives, uh, maybe a Hedgehog and a Spearpoint Blade. You know, kind of kind of work on it. Nice. So. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see what's what's around the corner. So, yeah, I'd love that spear point hedgehog. Mm-hmm. That would be killer. That would be very cool. Mm-hmm. Do you know your uh, <laughs> blade show booth number? Uh, offhand. I do not. Well, I, I do know it, but uh, not offhand. Yeah, same room. So that that side room, uh, right. whatever they call it. I forget what what do they call it, the side room. The uh, uh, I don't remember uh, the VIP right, lounge. It, um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. The, the um, champagne yeah. room. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, I have a, a corner booth uh, this time instead of just, you know, one single booth. So gotcha. Should be Near fun. the same Looking area as last year. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, just on the, uh, the same aisle, just on the, the opposite, uh, whatever side corner of it. Awesome. Yeah. This, awesome. this summer will be my first blade show. So I'm looking forward oh, cool. to coming by having, having a little chat with you, man. I'll definitely come yeah. by and say, yeah. Hey, so yeah. Swing by and, uh, look yeah, yeah I'll sure. show you, show you what I got. Yeah, awesome. Mm-hmm. It's going to be here in no time. Uh, is there anything mm-hmm. else before we wrap up? Thank our moderators, all that good stuff. Anything else you want to promote? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, seriously, head over to the website. Uh, you guys have any questions, you know, holler. Please text me, call me, email me, message me. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a, a Blade Show sale again. So whatever my, my price is are for my exclusives at the blade show i'll obviously um offer them on the site as well uh, yeah pl- plenty of stuff coming got a whole bunch of projects with uh devo uh, stout v2 the nip slip 
Um, gosh, I don't know. It seems like every week that you know, D, you know, Ke- Kevin and Colin, their their crazy minds, they got they got something new coming. So uh, usually I hop on board with them. Always, you know, get an exclusive with them. Uh, so yeah, bunch coming. Uh, you know, business is going really well, and I'm thankful for it. Um, I think people truly understand me and Brian and and the effort that we put in. And we're we're just not we're not a uh, a regular dealer you know you, i want you to text me i want you to call me i want to talk about knives um if you have any questions about knives you know just holler and uh i try to be as personal as i can and and honestly it's uh the, the relationships and friendships that i have formed over the the last three four or five years through instagram and youtube and and here i mean it's uh i love it and i've made friends for life and it's a good community and yeah it's all good i love it Awesome, well, man. I said it once already. I'm going to say it again. You are freaking killing it. Keep doing Thank what you're man. doing, brother, because you are doing it right. And appreciate thank, it. thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really yeah. enjoyed thank chatting you. with you. Yeah. yeah. Same here. And Ken chimed in. It looks like it's table 2419 before we sign oh, off. So anyone's going to be there. <laughs> thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone who tuned in today. Really appreciate every single one of you. Also, huge shout out to our moderator team, yeah. Randy's WSG, Bluminati Ninja, and Cheeto Bandito. I saw all three of you in the chat, so thank you again. Greatly appreciated. We're going to sign off. We'll stick online for a few minutes after, Austin. So, Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you yeah, guys next you guys. week. <clears throat>